crazy city, very busy city like Mumbai, people are traveling uh, and working all the time. There has been a rise seen in non-communicable neurological disease. Stress of course leads to uh, disturbance in mental health and that itself can promote uh, various brain diseases. There are lifestyle related disorders and that are, there are disorders which are unrelated to lifestyle and which can occur because of, for example, genetic susceptibility. It is a right of everyone to have good brain health and to be free of neurological disease. Every year World Brain Day is, uh, is celebrated on the 22nd of July. So the World Federation of Neurology is an organization that promotes brain health. And uh, the day this society was founded, is the day which is now celebrated as World Brain Day. That there has been a rise seen in non-communicable neurological disease and uh, trauma-related brain disease, for example, amongst other diseases of the brain. Stress, of course, leads to uh, disturbance in mental health and that itself can promote uh, various brain diseases. Lack of sleep can cause a lot of brain diseases. Chronic work stress can lead to, even if it doesn't lead to, it can exacerbate uh, various neurological diseases. If you have seizures or epilepsy, stress can provoke a seizure. So stress leads to abnormal, uh, uh, abnormal chemicals that are released in the brain, okay, or deleterious chemicals released in the brain that promote uh, disturbances and they can sometimes even create new disorders. There are lifestyle related disorders and that are, there are disorders which are unrelated to lifestyle and which can occur because of, for example, genetic susceptibility and uh, other factors as well, okay? So of course we encourage a healthy lifestyle and doing these things uh, which we said, talked about earlier you know, will cut down uh, several brain diseases, but there are other diseases as well. And sometimes they run in families. So it is not only lifestyle, but uh, genetic susceptibility. So a number of risk factors will increase the risk of particular neurological or specific neurological disease. However, what we can do today is with the knowledge that a person, for example, has a genetic problem, is going to develop Parkinson's. We can monitor that person more carefully. And when the person develops signs, prevent the delay prevent the time gap between onset of symptoms and treatment. There have already been a number of steps taken by the government and other organizations all across uh, our country in the last several years and decade to improve uh, awareness and even access to pre people with uh, brain health problems and um, you know that that uh, so doubling down on the, those efforts and continuing to break barriers and uh, allow all all strata of society all patients to have universal access to people or doctors who treat brain diseases so getting access to healthcare or brain health doctors is very important and we must do that and coupled with that uh, education regarding brain diseases common brain disorders such as stroke, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, dystonia, dementia, all of these things and a lot of these conditions are not, not there is no awareness about them. Myasthenia gravis is a disease which affects the muscles of one's body and there are certain muscles which are more predisposed to becoming weak. For example, muscles of the eyes. So commonly patients with myasthenia have droopy eyelids. They may have double vision. They may have difficulty in speaking or chewing or uh, lifting their neck up. So their neck may droop. They may have difficulty raising their arms or walking. So these are all the symptoms of myasthenia. And uh, it can occur in the young, it can occur in the old. And this disease happens because there is excessive immunity in the body. It is an autoimmune disease and thereby antibodies are produced which are harmful and attack muscles. 
And so therefore, once the diagnosis of myasthenia is made by a neurologist, so once we see patients li listen to their story and we see some signs on examination, we do a few blood tests and uh, an EMG test. So these are ways in which we diagnose myasthenia. Once we do that, we are able to diagnose and then treat. So there are medicines which can completely improve patients with myasthenia, not only temporarily, but even for prolonged periods of time, even lifelong. So it is a very treatable disorder. If you have difficulty in speaking or uh, double vision or uh, difficulty with vision of any type, blurring of vision, uh, difficulty in walking, uh, tremor or shaking of the hands, I'm talking about general brain disorders, not only myasthenia, um, difficulty with memory, this is often not noticed by the patient himself or herself, but by relatives, difficulty with memory and orientation uh, and uh, you know difficulty staying awake and just being drowsy all day, uh, you know, um, these are common, a tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, these are very common neurological symptoms for which you must seek attention. There are a number of simple things what people can do if uh, in a crazy city, very busy city like Mumbai, people are traveling uh, and working all the time, so as we said, few important things having a good sleep okay seven hours a day minimum having a good balanced diet yeah avoidance of junk food and uh, paying attention to what you eat and your general health mental health as we spoke about getting so above the age of 40 especially getting checked if you have you know basic health checks to ensure that you don't have any common conditions uh, such as diabetes or high blood pressure or heart disease, avoiding smoking and alcohol, uh, doing all these things and uh, ensuring if you have any symptoms especially, not to ignore them. So therefore, uh, you know, only awareness and education regarding uh, what you put into your body is doing to you. Okay, especially amongst the impressionable uh, age group, so our teenagers, our young adults, sometimes even older adults. Education and awareness, uh, you know, is key. So on the occasion of World Brain Day on July 22, um, we must all come together and uh, raise awareness about uh, an entity called Brain Health and uh, the importance of everyone in the world okay irrespective of race or religion or caste or financial status it is a right of everyone to have good brain health and to be free of neurological disease we must understand that uh, this is possible only if pa our patients are able to access correctly and rightly and in time without any barriers they are able to access healthcare at all levels so universal access to healthcare will enable this and to achieve this goal, we must, uh, you know, we must uh, educate the public, we must make them aware of common neurological disorders, the ones that we have spoken about, stroke and epilepsy, migraine, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, encephalitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myasthenia, major neurological diseases. So making people aware of this, the symptoms and signs of these, when to seek attention, so educating and making the public aware will, will increase uh, access to healthcare and uh, once we do that, then we can prevent a lot of brain disease related disability. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.